Hi, I'm Chris from Tiger Moth Racing. Um, I'm going to give you a quick look at these edge finders, which is a critical tool in machining. And um, if you haven't used one of these yet, then you're, you're definitely uh, starting your uh, journey into machining. Um, but this is the old school manual way of locating your parts uh, on your machine. And uh, we're going to talk about the classical Starrett 827B and uh, another one that I made. This is the old Starrett 827B, um, which is kind of the classic uh, traditional standard for edge finders. There's a bunch of other companies that make them, but to me, this is the best one. Um, this is the older style. I don't know when they stopped making these, but it has the stamped uh, letters in it. The new ones are all uh, laser engraved. So this roll stamp process they don't do on most of their tools anymore. Um, but I'm going to quickly show you how to use this guy and a couple things you can do with it. Um, and also show you this one, which is one that I made um, about eight years ago now. Um, has a couple of adjustments on it that I, I wanted to try out for myself. So the standard size is half inch diameter. Uh, they make metric ones too if you're uh, preferring that. Um, but it just goes in a collet, goes in the spindle. <laughs> the traditional way that these are taught to be used is by spinning them. I think the rate was 1200 RPM. So I'm going to come up to this edge here and what we're trying to do is locate the position of that edge on the machine. So we're going to come up until we reach a point where it gets uh, visually concentric and then it pops out. So right there would be where you would zero your machine or add in a Y positive uh, 100 thousandths and that's your uh, location for the Y position. So I'll put in Y 0.100 here and we'll go and do it again just to see what kind of results we get. Consistency, it's exactly the same um, on the readout here. We got five tenths that time. Go a little slower. If you go too fast, you'll overshoot it. So we're at one inch, so it's very consistent. So that's the traditional way that it's taught to be used. I honestly stopped doing that um, oh, probably about 10 years ago. What I do myself is I'll push it eccentric towards the part, and then I'll feed the table in until it brings the two uh, the two discs in line with each other. And you can feel, because I'm moving in Y, I'll feel my finger on the back side until it's flush. And honestly, you can feel uh, the difference in the surface of those two parts very accurately. Um, I tested this out to be about three tenths uh, repeatability. So I'll do that with X and Y. Um, and it's just faster and easier for me than running the spindle and doing the wobble test. And we're in the same position on Y as we were with the wobble. So we've got Y, I'll come over in X and do the same. So I'll push it eccentric, feed the X direction until those two surfaces match perfectly and you want to double check the Y to make sure it's on center and then you're good to go. So X point one negative absolute because the tip of this and most uh, edge finders is, is 200 thousands. <clears throat> So now we know 
we are 100 negative on x. And if we come up and return to zero, we have an easy feature on this machine where once you've set your positions, you can just go return to absolute zero, hit go, and the machine will wrap it there automatically. So you don't have to crank the handles or anything. So now we're on zero, zero for that part. Top left corner is standard reference position um, against the hard jaw. And so now you're ready to go and do your next operations. So I'm gonna do a quick little bolt hole pattern just to show an example of a feature you can do from a reference point. But honestly, you know, this is what you're gonna use for every part you're gonna make. Um, the edge finder is very accurate, uh, but the best way for high precision tooling would be to uh, drill and interpolate a reference position hole somewhere on your fixture. And then you would indicate that hole in every time you put that fixture back on the machine. And that's more accurate than using the edges of your part or your fixture. So we're in two axis mode. I'm gonna punch a bunch of spot holes here uh, just to give a, an idea of reference here. And that's it. So we know because we found our edge, we did a five hole bolt pattern here, uh, radiating from a center position of, what is it, 1.5 positive on X and uh, one inch negative on Y. So that's basically how you would locate all your features on your part. One thing I wanted to point out on this machine is how easy it is to do a large amount of holes or uh, a bunch of different series of holes. You can go to tracking, hand feed over to your first position to make sure that your settings are correct. And then this one has uh, an optional uh, remote start and go switch. So just by clicking the switch, you can jump to the next hole position pretty much as fast as you want to cycle through for whatever tool you're using. And this machine has a manual quill, so you're going to be drilling your hole positions manually um, or automatically in the three axis mode um, once you get to each hole position with whatever tool you're using. So we've looked at one side of this tool, which is the edge finder. Um, this one and in my opinion, the good ones have a center finder on the other end also, which is the same eccentric um, design that's spring-loaded. And what this one is great for is finding the center of small holes. So the other one finds the edgier part. This one finds the center of your hole. So if you have a part or a fixture that has a reference um, position, reference hole, or you're looking to find a hole to work on that hole, or uh, that hole will allow you to measure to get to another place, anything like that. Um, what you can do is just visually line this up on center. It doesn't have to be super close or perfect. And then you can drop it down into your hole and the tip will orient to the hole and the top shank stays uh, fixed to your spindle. So then you can move your handles around until the two halves are concentric. I like to do it by feel. You get a nice, keep a nice sharp edge on your tool and you can feel when it's centered and now you can zero out your uh, machine and know that you're exactly on center with that hole. Uh, one thing to note is the accuracy of this method is determined by the edge quality of your hole. If you just rough drilled that hole with a drill and the drill walked around, 
you're going to find the center of that hole but may not be in the actual position that you intended originally. So if you have a nice interpolated hole um, or something drilled with a rigid carbide drill or spot drill, something like that, um, you should have a good enough edge to use this tool. And the next step, if you need to be more precise, would be to indicate that hole. So that was a quick look at using the edge finder and center finder. Um, I hope that it was clear enough uh, to understand and that it helps you with your precision uh, locating and machining in your projects coming up. Um, it's a very handy tool that uh, in any home shop, small machine shop, you're going to use several times every day.